Now, there's masses of material in the series about the possibility of a lost civilization and presenting the evidence for a lost civilization. Um, but, but ultimately, when you talk of a lost civilization, how did it become lost? What happened that took it away, that obliterated it from human memory? And this apocalyptic episode called the Younger Dryas is the answer to that. The point I often make, which I think is worth making again and again, is how different the world was during the Ice Age. Mm -hmm. The Sahara Desert was green. It was a fertile place. Nobody's doing much archaeology in the Sahara Desert today. The Amazon rainforest, five million plus square kilometers under deep canopy. Hardly any archaeology has been done there. And yet, we know from LIDAR surveys that there are enormous structures under that canopy. And then what about sea level rise? 400 feet sea level rise at the end of the Ice Age, the prime real estate on Earth, 27 million square kilometers, it's about 10 million square miles, were submerged by rising sea levels at the end of the, at the, end of the Ice Age. And again, archaeology, there is marine archaeology, but they're not really looking very closely at that. I wonder, Jamie, would it be possible to pull up the, the diving clip? Is this from Japan? No, this one's actually from Bimini. We have an episode on, on, on Bimini and on the very controversial structure called the Bimini Road. You see that, that? The Bimini Road. Mm. The Bimini Road is not even very deep. It's only, it's only about 20 feet, 20 feet deep. It was one of the last things to be covered by Ice Age sea level rise, and that's why we show a graphic, a reconstruction of it above, above water. Um, it's made of extremely regular blocks, megalithic blocks, on a very large scale, more than 1,000 feet in length. Um, and and um, when you dive on it, and I've dived on it multiple times, and I went back to diving in order to dive on it again in this, in the, in this series, it's impossible to believe that it's entirely a work of nature. And I took an, a, 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 a marine biologist there with me who's dived all over the world, and he agreed with me that there's just, there's just no way that this thing can be, can be explained as a totally natural phenomenon. Do we looking... see it, Jamie? And what is the conventional reasoning for this? The conventional reasoning is that it's just beach rock uh, fractured into natural patterns. But when you get there and get underneath those rocks, you see that they're propped up, they're leveled out with, with rocks underneath them, that the whole thing is been very carefully structured by, by human beings. And the point is, and another point I'd like to make is Bimini today is a tiny, tiny island. But Bimini during the Ice Age was part of an enormous island. The whole Grand Bahama Bank was above water, uh, an enormous island. And weirdly, that island turns up on an ancient map. It turns up. That's not the Bimini Road. But that is, is on the left. That's the Bimini Road. You've got the cursor on there. Yeah, those are, those are shots of the Bimini Road. Yeah, it's hard to believe that these uniform stones occurred naturally. And yeah. how long is this? about a thousand feet in length and it's not just a straight line this has got a j-shaped curve at one end of it as well um and and we know that it's been underwater for about six or seven thousand years but the question is how long before that was it made how long did it stand there above water at a very prominent point on this ancient island that we now call the grand bahama banks and, and one of the mysteries i look into is that on an ancient map the famous Piri Reis map drawn by a Turkish admiral in 1513. That Grand Bahama Banks as an above water island is shown. It is featured on the Piri Reis map. And what do you see running down it but a, an image of the Bimini Road uh, above water. Now, how could Piri Reis, who drew his map in 1513, have known this? He tells us the answer, that he based his map on more than 20 older source maps all of which are now lost. And he suggests that those maps had come out of the famous library of Alexandria and that they'd been taken to Constantinople and that's where he got access to them. Somebody, I believe, was mapping the world, was exploring the earth during the Ice Age and left us ancient maps that show features that only existed during the Ice Age. Um, oh, that's the Orontius Phineas. No, no, this it? is Piri Reis. Oh, that's Piri Reis. Okay. It's on its side at the moment, but yeah. da the, down there in the lower left, if you bring the cursor down, that, that, yeah, that big island down there in the lower left, that island is exactly where the Grand Bahama Banks were, and above water, 
version of the Grand Bahama Banks during the Ice Age, and that feature running down the middle of it looks very like the Bimini Road to me. Yeah, well, it does. Mm. Wow. So again, it suggests not only do we have a cataclysmic event that changes the face of the Earth, uh, but also we have evidence that somebody as yet unrecognized by archaeology had the capacity to explore the world and to map the world during the last ice age. One of the things I find most striking is the presence of Antarctica on ancient maps because we didn't discover it until 1820. And yet it's on maps drawn in the 1500s with great detail, which again were based on much older source maps that have now been lost to us. Um, the astonishing thing is the, the so-called Pinkerton world map. I don't know if you can, if you can find it, Jamie. Uh, drawn, I think, in 1813 or 1818, based on the latest exploration data at that time. And where Antarctica is, Antarctica is, yeah, that one, keep going right, that one. That, that one you've got up at the top there. It just shows a hole where Antarctica is. Mm. Because it was an honest map. Nobody right. had found it by then. But if you go back to, for example, the Wolsey-Wooler world map drawn in 1530 or thereabouts, you find Antarctica is present. If you can find Wolsey-Wooler world map, it would be worth taking a look at. Um, Orontius Phineas. Go for Oron Or Or Orontius. Mm -hmm. O-R-O-N-T-E-U-S. Phineas. F-I-N-N-A-E-U-S. The Orontius Phineas map. That map shows, shows Antarctica mm -hmm. exactly where it should be. And it shows it, there we go, mm -hmm. right-hand side. There's Antarctica at the tip of South America, mm -hmm. just south of South Africa. And what did they call it back then? Well, they call it the Southern Land. Um, and, it's, and it's larger than it is today, but it was larger than it is today during the Ice Age. Antarctica was a much bigger... Now, what the fuck is it doing on a map drawn in the 1500s, which we know was based on older source maps when nobody knew it existed in the 1500s? To me, the obvious answer is we are dealing with the fingerprints of a lost civilization that mapped the world and that left evidence of that mapping, which ancient map makers found and used and incorporated into their maps. These maps can be very confusing because they were trying to mix exploration data from their own period with data from the older maps. But when you look at these maps in depth, they're very, very intriguing. 